In the early days of web design, web designers had it quite simple. They only had to deal with desktop computers, and screen widths were pretty predictable. With the advent of the smartphones, things got complicated pretty quickly, and the browser organizations had to make a choice. Do we recognize that these smartphones have a much smaller screen, and so we just show the top left-hand portion of the original website, or do we shrink the whole website down? They chose the latter option because it increased usability for smartphone users and also it made all the previous websites that have been developed heretofore compatible with the new devices. Of course, after the smartphone, we've all sorts of other different devices as well, like tablets, both portrait and landscape. All sorts of bigger phones came along, things that might be in between phones and tablets called phablets, and all sorts of other different things. We're now in the era of folding smartphones, so we've got square screens to contend with. But unless web developers take action, we're still left with the original solution that the uh, browser organizations took at the beginning, which is to shrink the actual website down to fit onto a device that's got a smaller screen. But that has the effect of having a suboptimal experience on smartphones. You can see here, especially if we focus in on the image, whereas that image is big enough on a desktop computer, when we shrink it down, that image is going to be far too small to make any discernible type of impact in the user's experience. With responsive web design, things have moved on, things have evolved, and we've now got some tools in our toolkit for web developers that allows us to tell the browser we know about responsive web design and we've taken action that we have coded this website with different techniques that responds to whatever size the device is. We need to stop the browser from automatically taking this shrinking action and that's where the viewport meta tag comes in. This is the example without any viewport used and we can quickly flick into the mobile view for developers in Chrome. And again, that's what we saw previously. Let's look at the code here. And the meta viewport tag goes into the head section just like all the other meta tags. And this is what it looks like. So just two different attributes. First of all, naming it as the viewport. And then the content has two different parts. The width setting it equal to device width. That stops the browser from shrinking the website just like was previously described. Initial scale setting it to 1.0 just means that there should be no zoom here. Generally, these settings are for the vast majority of websites out there. And the meta tag that you see in front of you can just be copied and pasted into the head section of all of your websites going forward. This is the original without any viewport meta tag. And let's flick into the other tab to see the effects that take place when the viewport meta tag is added in. So you can see the picture is much bigger and there's less altering of the margins and so on. Now, in response to web design, setting the viewport meta tag is really just a first step. Depending on the layout and the structure of a website, we can take a lot of extra steps to actually march towards really good responsive web design, such as media queries, etc. But by simply adding in the viewport meta tag as described, it will fix a lot of initial problems you have in trying to get your website to look good in desktop and in smartphone view. And that's all about the viewport meta tag.